FGM is not an Islamic thing, it's a cultural thing. It's brutal and it's like stealing a child's happiness. FGM is a hot topic within the community and people have different ideas. Some support it, some are against it, but it's not in the religion at all. And in, in terms of UK law, it's been banned since 2003. It's illegal. Why should we be against God to cut, to cut part of our, our body to make our girls be better or all? To, to make our girls look different from others. Human, human beings, are, we are the same and uh, God has made us that way. It's something based on culture um, and I feel um, or I understand it um, is something to control the woman's mind. Because it's something which is cultural and it's something which, uh, which has been there for a long time ago, before even these an an anesthetics mm. came around, mm -hmm. they don't do they don't use any like anesthetics mm -hmm. them times. But now I think people because of the Western life and everything and hospitals, mm -hmm. so I think they use anesthetic these days. But the time myself I went through it, there was no any anesthetic used and. Um, but they normally have like cubs they use I really don't know in English it's called Malmal mm -hmm. but I think I'll find for you the, the, the name in English they use that one to stop the bleeding you know and they, they, they use like uh, the egg white and those kind of stuff because you know the egg white uh, um, farms farms the, the skin or, or you know they use that one, they put it on you, they mix it with that malmal, and then they, they, they put it on you on where they did the operation. I'm a Somali, so uh, it goes without saying I went through the, the, I went through FGM um, when I was about maybe eight or nine years old. Um, I remember it was very traumatic for me. Um, you went through it without... Uh, injections without uh, painkillers and you are a lot you are not unconscious you are very conscious looking at people um uh, for me uh, i still have issues with an aunt of mine who, who was the one who was holding me down um the first time i saw my cousins have been circumcised my two my two sis, uh, uh, girl my two um, cousins have been circumcised after that Every time they came to me, are you being circumcised? I said, no. Oh, that's not good. So I became a celebrity from my um, friends and families. After that, I always ask my mom if I can get that. Then my mom said, you're still young, so just I will give you time. My mom, was she doesn't want me to make me that, but I forced her. One day I lie on the lady who make the circumcise for the girls. She was, um, she was doing her own ch work, and then I go to her, her place. I said, my mom said, come and do my daughter to circumcise. When she came to my house, my mom, she became shocked. She said, I didn't, I didn't call you. She said, my, your, your daughter came to me, and she told me that you, are, that you want me to come to do your daughters. Then my mom, she, she became shocked. Then she said, um, can you please come back next week? I said, no, I am ready because I feel bullying from my friends and my other kids in the, in the area. So please, mama, do it. I cried. I said, mom, please, I'm ready. Then she decided. And then after that, the woman, she circumcised me then. From where I come from in Kenya, uh, I had the neighbors who are coming from Kisi. So, they had a, a daughter who was the age of my daughter. So when that daughter was uh, six years, and uh, the daughter told my daughter one day, oh, do you know me, I'm going home in August. What for? And they said, hey, me, I'm going. I'm going, you know, uh, our tradition that they say that uh, I should be circumcised so that I don't, uh, when I'm a grown up, I don't, uh, you don't have that desire of sleeping with men. So 
me, I'm going to, they are going to cut it. Why, what are they going to cut it? My daughter asked. She said, ah, I'll tell you when I come back. So she went and uh, she went and she was circumcised. When she came back, she became very ill. And the parents couldn't tell us what was going on. They were just saying, oh, she has malaria, she has malaria. So, because I had the message, I knew it. But then when I talk, I was working with her mother, when I asked her, she said, ah, in our country it is normal. In, in our culture it is normal, we have to do it. But the way I saw it when the child, what the child was going through, I didn't like it. So I think they have to stop that thing. It really affects me very, very bad. I become very free sick. I lose more, more blood. I couldn't able to stand, to move around, to go to the toilet. I don't want to pass urine. And then I become very, very, very ill. After that, my mom took me to the hospital. And then the doctors, they stopped the bleeding because there was a vein cut off already and the blood, blood is coming, too much blood is coming. And then the, the, the doctors, they, 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 um, they fixed the vein and they cleaned the area. And then they gave me medication, antibiotics. So they look, uh, they keep an eye every day. After that, I survived. But it takes me to survive a long time. There are some who are, after circumcision, they get infections, which makes them feel ill all their lives. So I think they are mentally disturbed and they are stressed. Um, I'd say it left me scared for life. Um, I'm, a 30, I'm 38 years old now, a mother and uh, a wife. Um, I have a son and two daughters. For me, married life uh, has, has been a challenge of some sort. Um, for like, let's say uh, during intercourse, uh, it becomes very unbearable at times because of the pain, and sometimes uh, you you are ashamed. Then you are ashamed to to get dressed or undressed in front of your husband. It's been difficult. Uh, something else is when you you get you're pregnant and your your joy comes with with uh, fear of the of the unknown. Cause cause like. You, you 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 know that you'll go through the, through those antenatal clinics and examinations which 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 gets you very scared because of, of 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 the embarrassment you feel oh, um, i personally went through that i used to feel so embarrassed when i'm getting those physical exams i'd feel like the the nurses are looking at me weird and i to, to me it was it, it has been trauma after trauma I think they do circumcision for men, which is to 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 protect them from the the, the sickness, you know, in their in their private part and all these kind of yeah, it's a hygiene and protection. But for the women, there is no protection there for sure. It's just an open thing which doesn't have anything to cover or anything. Why should you cut it anyway? And that is the most, I think, is the most where the the the, the woman gets all her. her sexual feelings and all those kind of stuff. So if you damage that that place, how do you expect her like to enjoy her life? And, 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 and she's just going to be like a piece of log, just a man come in and then just do whatever they want to do, get babies and that's it. So it's unfair for, for, for a woman not to also enjoy themselves. To understand it is difficult. Uh, it's when people been told um, many times the the importance of having done FGM. Um, it won't be necessarily you to tell them it is hard. It is um, somehow um, um, kind of uh, you label the people. Um, when you say that about it because it's that thing has been done for your grandma, for your great grandma, for you to say that is a um, bad thing, it's, it's unspeakable. 
So basically, I've approached few people in the community and um, they were not happy for me to ask them about IBGM and they told me that I should not continue trying to look for people who, do, who want to talk about it because it's a sensitive subject and I'm assuming that they are supporting it because if they don't support it, they should be open and easy to talk about it. And I was told, like, if anyone get caught out, that I would be seeing the one that betrayed on them and that, sh that I should be careful, you know, because if something did happen, that I'll be looked at and it sounded almost like they would threaten me. There was some good stuff which came out of it and then there was some bad stuff which came out of it. The good stuff is like I got some very good positive things and uh, I've seen like there are some people who are quite against it and those are people who are giving, they gave me a, a lot of very powerful uh, views in regards to, to the FGM. And the bad side of it is like, um, I got like a few people who are quite against it. They did not want me to talk about it at all. And they said, um, I'm ashamed the 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 community, I'm assuming my own community, we shouldn't talk about this thing. I felt quite bad and um, I said to them, uh, what do you think then we should do to stop the, the, the FGM or the cutting or whatever they say? And they said to me, some of them said it is in the, in the, in the, in the Quran and I was challenging them, I said it's not. And uh, they said, like, if something was there in the Quran, why should we tamper with it? And, 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 and you know, even the prophet said he did it. I don't know. I said, no, there is nothing like that. And I've never seen it. I've never heard it. If they can give me the verses of the Quran, which says that, then I can get the, the, the proof for myself. But since I've been, like, grown up, I don't know anything in regards to that in the religion of Islam. I feel like the issues of um, FGM are critically important for women at the minute. Um, I think it's so important for people of many cultures to have a clear understanding. Um, I mean, within my role as a healthcare assistant and counsellor, um, I encounter loads of issues within my daily work, in fact, um, that look at the needs of women um, who have encountered FGM and even the children whose parents have been affected because a number of those um, children are actually single parents, single female parents bringing up their children. Um, and, and the issue gets filtered down, you know. I feel like people that go into healthcare professions, for example, we're, we're taught about it. It's part of our curriculum to be taught and to understand legislation. But I just think people in the community in general don't actually have a clear understanding of what it is. Here in the UK, I think the authorities should make it their duty to educate children from in schools about FGM. In particular, one of the schools that I visited and I spoke to, to the head teacher is my son's school. And um, the head teacher was very, very interested in this FGM stuff, but she was also furious. And um, she was furious because she said, like, um, I think the, the, the level and the age of the, the, the children who undergo the FGM is the primary level and she feels that the, 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 the authority don't see that and they give all the trainings or all the, 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 the workshops and all this kind of stuff to secondary schools. Well, our plan is to engage with youth, mm. with the families mm -hmm. and also the SBF, FGM issue is not business about only women or men, it's mm. the family issues, it's family issues yeah. community issues, mm. it's society issue, government issues, school issues, so we will engage in all the society and do what we can do. And I think he, what you say, I agree with you to meet you, uh, engage with you, yes. youth leaders, and also the family, both husband and wife, and sometimes with their children. I think people should be educated on the subject in a way that helps women feel safe and not 
be put through the type of pain and distress that FGM causes for them.